Okay, so um, this is the Triumph Thruxton R, which we do a lovely supercharger conversion, which increases the horsepower from 80 horsepower up there around to a stage one kit for a standard engine of 140 horsepower, and a stage two kit where we put our own JE low compression pistons in. Uh, we can take that to around 165, 170 horsepower. You can go more if you want, but we try to be a little bit conservative. We only like to double the horsepower, not triple it. Okay, so this is the C1560 supercharger we use. A standard we fit with an 85 mil pulley. If you fit the TTS forge pistons and you go for more horsepower, we drop this down to an 80 mil pulley. We change the belt length to suit and you can have whichever kit you want to suit your application. Um, it's not a bad kit to fit. We've got our own CNC machined right hand alternator case, the belt guard, the belt guard, uh, sorry, the alternator case also incorporates the supercharger oil tank. So we've got oil, a temperature gauge there and a back plate to the case, which we'll see on the bench in a moment. This also has got some thinning around. We're quite close to the exhaust, but it is out in the open, so we need to keep an eye on oil temperatures. But what we've done, complete with the oil cooler at the front, on top of our intercooler for the supercharger. Uh, the oil cooler keeps the supercharger oil cool. Obviously, the, old, uh, the intercooler keeps the air cool to make more horsepower in the engine. Um, now, like I say, it's, it's not a bad kit to fit. It's not as simple as the V-Rod kit that we did the other week. Uh, we have to put this on the main stand, not a bike stand, but on a proper stand. Get the back wheel out, uh, take the seat off, take the mud guard off, and we've got to pull out the air box, and we have to cut the air box so that we can make space for our plenum chamber. This is the plenum chamber. So we try to make this as big as possible. This has a big effect on how much horsepower you make. If you can have a big, big intercooler and a uh, big plenum chamber, then you've got a residual mass of air behind the throttle bodies, so you get more even distribution. It's easier for the engine to digest the air, and it makes more power. So if you're making your own kit, bear that in mind. Make the pipe work and everything as big as you possibly can to get some volume of air behind the throttle bodies. This works really well. So that sits in there underneath the seat, and then to go to the throttle bodies, we have a specially wound silicon uh, adapter, for lack of a better word. That pushes on there and then pushes on to both throttle bodies. That's quite tight to get in. You need some patience. Um, the bike's really tightly packaged as it comes, so as making things like this makes life a little bit tricky. But it goes and it fits well and it's airtight. Like I say, the main case, which you need to take the alternator windings out of the standard Triumph case, bolt into here, and bolt in the ignition pickup, and then feed through the cables through the grommet entry and out so that it uh, continues back to the engine wiring loom. You must make sure that you put a little bit of extra silicon around here. The last thing you want is oil leaks running down the side of your bike. The drive, like most of our drives, are straightforward off the end of the crankshaft. We've got a spigot, which has got a hex drive. This is relying totally on friction and bolt pressure to give you the drive. It's a 12 millimeter bolt, torqued up to 110 foot pound of torque. Now that will drive the pulley quite nicely as long as you keep all these faces and the faces in the end of the alternator clinically clean and you put it together bone dry and as you assemble it obviously a little bit grease around the oil oil seal and pop it through once you've got that assembled you have to put the uh, pulley on the spigot same as usual hex drive to give positive drive and that's your bolt and it's as simple as that you just talk that up like I say 110 foot pound it's worthwhile putting a little bit of silicon sealer on the inside of here because believe it or not oil can work its way around the thread even though it's loctited we have had 
some issues in early days where oil worked its way up the shaft and just tiny smidgen of oil got through here. So it's worthwhile just running a smear of silicon seal around there when you assemble. Supercharger is there. Supercharger pulley here. Just one tension of pulley, no other pulleys other than the drive pulley. So, I said earlier. So as you can see on the inside of the case, all that is oil tank. So you've got the oil back into the tank, oil out of the tank, and a breather which goes up under the tank, under the petrol tank. So there is no other oil tank to find space for it. We've built it in there to keep the package nice and tight. So on this setup, we go from the bottom of the oil tank straight to the oil in. This is a closed system, so it doesn't really matter where the oil filter is. So we, for convenience, we go from the bottom of the oil tank straight to the oil in on the supercharger, out of the oil out, uh, the supercharger outlet, round one-way valve, pointing that way. So that oil out can go this way, but when you turn the engine off and the supercharger si tries to siphon back, it doesn't pull any oil back into the supercharger. Then the oil filter. From the oil filter, it comes round, down, to the oil cooler inlet, out of the inlet, and back to the top of the tank, which is just here. So that's, that's the oil back into the tank. So you've got the oil back to the tank on the lower one, and the oil tank breather on the higher of the two holes, and that breather pipe goes up underneath the tank out of the way. Um, top it up with oil, bleed it as per the Rotrex instruction manual and you're ready to go. So that's the oil system sorted. Uh, as far as the air intake to the supercharger, then we have a small pipe which is here. That goes across the front of the engine from the supercharger and an up air filter sits on this side so that goes right across there and if you come around this side we can see that we have a an air filter around this side technically away now as far as the intercooler and pipe work is concerned we've discussed putting the plenum chamber under the tank and connecting the pipes to the throttle bodies we need to get from the supercharger to the plenum chamber. So this is the outlet of the supercharger down here, which already has a welded pipe to bring it down and then connect to the intercooler. So we go from the intercooler inlet, across the intercooler, out of the intercooler, along the side of the bike and connect up with the plenum chamber. You'll see also right in there tight is a teed off blow off valve. Like all superchargers that belt driven, the supercharger is making air, making boost whether you want it or not. So when you're on cruise or idle, the blow off valve opens and disperses that air. So that's connected to one of the vacuum pipes off the top of the throttle bodies. So every time you close the throttle, it opens the valve and disperses the air. Standard procedure. Um, oil filter there is for the breather, top of the engine breather. We supply that in the kit as well. kit comes with compre comprehensive instructions tells you pretty well everything you need to know right on to uh, the 
electronic side and getting the right fuel and ignition uh, into the engine. We supply in the kit, we supply injector plugs and some replacement injectors. The replacement injectors are double the capacity of the original ones to cater for the double horsepower. Um, so you've got to crimp these plugs onto the wiring harness um, and then once you've put the injectors in they just go straight on. Okay, regarding the injectors, so you remove the standard injectors and replace them with these little babies. Now to get these in, you need to put this supplied shim that goes in the hole first before that goes in. These have already got the O-rings on the bottom. The O-ring from your original injector goes in the top. Once you've done that, the fuel rail fits straight back on. There's no other issues. We've already gone through that you change the injector plug. You supply those in a little bag. It means that you've got to cut the original injector plug off and crimp these on and that makes a nice positive finish to the job. Okay, so this is a blower valve. You connect to the vacuum side of the carburetors, sorry, carburetors look alike, throttle bodies, to one of these vacuum pipes. Then when you get off the throttle, it opens the valve, or when you're cruising, the valve stays open. There's no real need to adjust it. The way it comes is the way it'll work best. And that fits down here and is teed off the pipe from the, from the intercooler back to the plenum chamber, there's a tee off on that pipe and it's connected just with a short uh, silicon hose and a couple of clamps. We run, on the Thruxtons, we run Power Commander 5, which incorporates the ignition timing as well, so we can adjust the ignition. So we can adjust the fuel and the ignition and we like to run twin auto tune with it as well to keep it on song and when we do this we're pretty confident that it'll be trouble free no matter what altitude or atmosphere you're in everything will run sweet all the time to help improve the horsepower we do our own headers so these are manufactured for us and we generally couple up these with Vance Nines pipes um, you can drill out your own pipes to get a bit freer, more free of flowing and a bit more exhaust note. Um, we do away with the cat and it makes for a, probably another 15 horsepower of running the stock exhaust system, which gives the engine an easier time because you're not creating so much back pressure and you're not generating so much heat, even though you're making more horsepower. So that just about completes it. To get to the power to the ground, uh, we find that the standard clutch can't take the torque, so you simply have to change the clutch springs that we supply as part of the kit. Straightforward, no big deal.